Father, we do need you tonight. We need you every single day, every moment. We can do nothing without you, God. Until you, our helper comes. We are impotent, God. We're not able to even rise up in our own strength and have the sanity of our minds without your help. God, if we didn't have you in our life, some of the situations and the people that we meet would make us lose our minds. God, we need you to be our peace and our sanity. We need you to be our strength, our hope for tomorrow, dear God, our courage to get us through today. God, and we trust you, the one who lifts our head, the one who is our help meet. We look unto you, God, to help us in all of those things that we are so weak in ourselves. When we get in financial binds and we don't know what else to do, God, we want you to know that no matter how much we get, we need you. No matter how good times get, we need you. God, never ever let us get into a place in this life that we think that we don't need you any longer. But forever keep us with that sensitivity in our consciousness that we need you in order to make it. We need you, God, to love us unconditionally. We need you, God, to use us for your glory. We need you. We can't make it without you. And Father, we need you to even open the eyes of our understanding and our spiritual ears that we might be able to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. We bless you tonight and surrender all that we are and all that we ever hope to be to you. And I pray now, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the wonderful presence of God. How wonderful is the Lord. He is so absolutely good. And we just celebrate him for all that he means to us because he's such an awesome, awesome God. If you would open your Bibles to the 10th chapter of the gospel according to St. John, St. John chapter 10. Now, you know, when I say St. John, I mean Big John, not first, second, and third John. Those, those are little Johns. I mean Big John. St. John chapter 10, beginning with the first verse, St. John chapter 10, beginning with the very first verse, you'll notice these words. This is Jesus talking. Most assuredly, I say to you that he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door by the door is the shepherd of the sheep and to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out and when he brings out his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice for they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers and Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. And Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I want to talk from the subject in this series, victory over enemies. Victory over enemies. We are living in a day and time now where either you just came out of an attack or you're in one or you're headed into one. And uh, we've already been warned to fight the good fight of faith. And if you know that there's going to be a fight, 
to be able to maintain the faith, then you may as well prepare yourselves for battle. We have unfriendly folks in the world that don't necessarily like us. They don't like what you stand for, what you represent, nor what you believe in. And we have to be prepared for enemy attack. One of the things in being successful in this world uh, is it's not negative, but it might sound negative to some individuals. It, is, it has to do with anticipating negative forces. Because whenever you get ready to build something, you have to realize if you ever do anything positive in this world, you are going to have demonic or satanic opposition. If you try to build a strong marriage, you're going to have things that will work against your marriage. If you try to raise positive, healthy children, you're going to have things that are going to try to pull your children away and mess them up. Anytime that you do anything positive in this world in which we live, you're going to receive demonic opposition. Your life will come through periods and times of satanic attack. And so I don't want anybody to be unwise concerning these attacks, but I want you to know that the Lord is with you even in the midst of the attack. And whenever your life comes under attack, it will appear as though time stands still. If you're in a struggle, it looks like it will never get out. It's like, Lord, when on earth is this going to be finished? When am I going to get through this? It looks like everything goes in slow motion. You ever notice in the Matrix, if those of you that saw the Matrix when they just start swerving around, when you come under attack and things go in slow motion? That's what happens is at least the appearance of it. He will magnify things to the degree that it seems as though time has slowed down when you are waiting on your deliverance, on your breakthrough, on all of this drama to stop. When you are really honestly waiting on this thing, and you notice that it it talks about uh, Jesus uh, being a good shepherd and a shepherd, how they lead their sheep. You see, one of the reasons that he pointed this out, because in Eastern culture, where shepherds would have their flock, it was not uncommon for several different shepherds to be traveling with with their own sheep, their own flock of sheep, and sometimes they would come to places and all of the sheep would blend in together. That shepherd simply had to talk because the sheep knew his voice. All of them looked alike, so you couldn't exactly just look at them and say, oh, this one is mine, that one is mine, this one is mine over here. No, no, when they would hear their shepherd's voice, that gave them clues to let them know that this was their shepherd and they needed to follow him. One of the reasons that I don't ever want to get too big as a pastor to come down and, 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 and touch the members of the church is because I'm a shepherd, and a shepherd has to run his hands through the wool of the sheep. One of the things that he is doing when he runs his hands through the wool of the sheep is that he is scenting, scenting the sheep. In other words, he comes close enough to them because animals have a keen sense of smell and they begin to learn the smell of the shepherd. So even when Jesus is close to you and you don't hear anything from him, you ought to be able to... You can sense him even when you can't see him. Are you listening to me? You ought to be able to come into some positions in your life where you can sense him and just say, I, I know I'm, I'm smelling the sweet presence of God. I, 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 don't, I don't literally see him, but, but I, I sense that, that he's here.